Many Christians face accusations of making their worldview unfalsifiable by providing responses to objections that opponents perceive as post hoc rationalizations. Is this truly the decisive blow to Christianity that some people claim it to be? Or is it possible that such accusations stem from a misunderstanding of how effective theory comparison works? To explore this question, we will delve into a concept known as the Duhem Quine thesis, which sheds a light on how Christianity possesses explanatory flexibility to accommodate data that might initially appear to challenge it. Through this investigation, we aim to unravel the role of reason in understanding how Christianity can reconcile seemingly contradictory information. The Duhem Quine thesis, also known as the Duhem Quine problem or the underdetermination of theory by evidence, is a concept in the philosophy of science that addresses the relationship between theories and evidence. It is named after the French physicist Pierre Duhem and the American philosopher Willard Van Orman Quine, who made significant contributions to our understanding of the complex nature of scientific theories and the challenges involved in testing them, both of whom made significant contributions to this idea. One of Duhem's most influential works, La Théorie Physique Son Objet et Cette Structure, in other words, The Aim and Structure of Physical Theory, which was published in 1906, laid the foundation for what would later become known as the Duhem Quine thesis. In this work, Duhem explored the fundamental aspects of scientific theories and their interconnectedness, focusing on the holistic nature of theory evaluation. Duhem argued that scientific theories are not isolated entities but are composed of a network of interconnected hypotheses, auxiliary assumptions, and background knowledge. He emphasized that when testing a hypothesis or evaluating a theory, it is crucial to consider the entire theoretical framework rather than isolating individual components. This perspective challenged the traditional notion of straightforward hypothesis testing and called for a more comprehensive evaluation of scientific theories. Duhem's work paved the way for subsequent developments in the philosophy of science, leading to the formulation of the Duhem Quine thesis. This thesis, named after both Duhem and the American philosopher Willem van Orman Quine, further expanded on Duhem's ideas and highlighted the underdetermination of theory by evidence. While Duhem's original work focused primarily on the physical sciences, his ideas have had far-reaching implications for philosophy and the evaluation of scientific, historical, and stretching even to the philosophical and theological theories more broadly. His emphasis on the holistic nature of theories and the interconnectedness of the hypotheses and assumptions has influenced various fields, including the philosophy of religion. Therefore, when discussing the Duhem Quine thesis, it is important to recognize the seminal contribution of Pierre Duhem through his influential work. Duhem's insights into the complex structure of scientific theories and his recognition of the interdependencies within them laid the groundwork for a deeper understanding of the challenges inherent in theory evaluation and the development of the Duhem Quine thesis as a significant concept to the philosophy of science. So what exactly is the point here? The thesis suggests that it is impossible to test a single scientific hypothesis in isolation because any experiment or observation is influenced by a network of assumptions and auxiliary hypotheses. According to Duhem and Quine, when a hypothesis is tested and produces a result that conflicts with the predictions, it is difficult to determine which part of the network of beliefs and assumptions is responsible for the discrepancy. This means that it is challenging to pinpoint whether a particular hypothesis or auxiliary assumption is false based solely on the empirical evidence. Keep this in mind when we return to apply this to the debate about God's existence. The Duhem Quine thesis challenges the traditional notion of straightforward hypothesis testing and highlights the holistic nature of scientific theories. It suggests that theories are not confirmed or refuted in isolation, but rather as part of a larger web of beliefs and assumptions. 
Therefore, if empirical evidence contradicts a theory, scientists have the flexibility to revise or modify any component of the theory, including auxiliary hypotheses, background assumptions, or even the entire theoretical framework. This thesis has important implications for the philosophy of science, as it emphasizes the role of scientific communities in evaluating and revising theories based on evidence. It also highlights the inherent uncertainty and subjectivity involved in scientific inquiry, as scientists must make judgments and decisions about which parts of the theoretical network to modify when faced with conflicting evidence. It's worth noting that while the Duhem Klein thesis challenges the idea of conclusive hypothesis testing, it does not imply that all theories are equally valid or probable, or that science is arbitrary. Rather, it underscores the complexity of theory confirmation and the need for critical evaluation and ongoing refinement in scientific practice. Now, this is important because the Duhem Quine thesis, which challenges the traditional view of falsificationism, which is the view that the main activity of a researcher is to invalidate a theory by observation or experiment as a definitive method of theory evaluation. This is done by highlighting the holistic nature of scientific theories and the interconnectedness of hypotheses and auxiliary assumptions. The Duhem Quine thesis sheds light on the limitations of falsificationism. Because of this, falsificationism is an outdated and inadequate approach to theory comparison as it oversimplifies the complexity of scientific inquiry and fails to account for the subjective and context dependent aspects of theory assessment. We will be arguing that falsificationism is therefore false, and this is why when Christians face accusations of making their worldview unfalsifiable by providing responses to objections that opponents perceive as post hoc rationalizations is not the blow people may think it is. Falsificationism, popularized by Karl Popper, has long been regarded as a cornerstone of scientific methodology. It posits that scientific theory should be evaluated based on their ability to be falsified through empirical evidence. However, the Duhem Quine thesis challenges this notion by highlighting the inherent complexity and interdependence of scientific hypotheses and auxiliary assumptions. As noted by philosopher Peter Lipton, the Duhem Quine thesis poses a significant challenge to the simplistic idea that theories can be tested and falsified in isolation. The reasons why can be broken up into four main parts. First, let's look at the holistic nature of scientific theories. Scientific theories consist of a network of interconnected hypotheses, auxiliary assumptions, and background knowledge. The Duhem Quine thesis argues that when a hypothesis is tested and conflicts with predictions, it is difficult to isolate which specific component of the theoretical network is responsible for the discrepancy. As philosopher Paul Feunigen Hewn explains, the Duhem Quine thesis emphasizes the holistic character of scientific theories and the fact that a single hypothesis cannot be tested in isolation. This holistic perspective suggests that the failure of a prediction does not necessarily imply that the specific hypothesis being tested is false. Instead, it calls for a critical examination of the entire theoretical framework and auxiliary assumptions. Next is what's called the underdetermination of theory by evidence. The underdetermination of theory by evidence is a key aspect of the Duhem Quine thesis, further undermining the validity of falsificationism. Since evidence alone cannot unequivocally identify the cause of a discrepancy between a theory and an observation, scientists are faced with multiple plausible explanations. As philosopher Imre Lakatos points out, the Duhem Quine thesis reveals that a single falsifying observation cannot definitively refute a theory, as there are always alternative hypotheses and auxiliary assumptions that can be modified to accommodate the conflicting evidence. Consequently, the falsification of a specific hypothesis does not necessarily lead to the rejection of an entire theory. Rather, it prompts scientists to consider alternative explanations and revise auxiliary assumptions, rendering falsificationism an incomplete and limited methodology. Third, we have what's called context-dependent theory evaluation. Falsificationism assumes that theories can be evaluated independently of wider scientific context. 
However, the Duhem Quine thesis emphasizes the subjectivity and context dependency of theory evaluation. The choice of which hypothesis or auxiliary assumptions to modify or discard when faced with conflicting evidence is influenced by various subjective factors, such as scientific judgment, theoretical preferences, axiology, and societal norms. As philosopher Bas C. van Frossen argues, the Duhem Quine thesis highlights the subjective nature of theory evaluation and the fact that scientists make judgments about which components of theoretical network need to be revised based on a range of subjective factors. This subjectivity calls into question the objectivity and the universality of falsificationism as a theory evaluation tool. Lastly, we have the refinement and the evolution of scientific theories. The Duhem Quine thesis encourages a more nuanced approach to theory evaluation, one that recognizes the frequentive and the evolutionary nature of scientific inquiry. Instead of viewing the failure to falsify a hypothesis as a definitive rejection of a theory, the thesis suggests that scientific theories are subject to continual refinement and revision. As physicist and philosopher Nancy Cartwright argues, the Duhem Quine thesis promotes the idea that scientific theories are not static entities, but rather dynamic frameworks that can be refined and modified in response to empirical evidence and theoretical advancements. Scientists have the flexibility to modify auxiliary assumptions, reformulate hypotheses, or even reconstruct the entire theoretical framework in light of new evidence and theoretical insights. With this in place, let's consider a few examples that demonstrate why this view of theory comparison should be preferred over falsificationism. Several historical examples provide concrete illustrations of the limitations of falsificationism. To start, we have the phenomenon of black body radiation. One example is the phenomenon of black body radiation, which posed a challenge to classical physics. Rather than abandoning the entire theory, physicists developed new auxiliary assumptions and theoretical frameworks leading to the formulation of quantum mechanics. In the late 19th century, physicists were attempting to understand radiation emitted by an idealized object known as a black body. According to classical physics, the energy emitted by a black body should increase without bound as the frequency of radiation increases, which is known as the ultraviolet catastrophe. However, the experimental observations contradicted this prediction and showed that the energy distribution followed a different pattern. To address this discrepancy, Max Planck introduced a new auxiliary assumption in 1900 that revolutionized our understanding of black body radiation. Planck proposed that the energy could only be emitted or absorbed in discrete packets or quanta rather than continuously. This assumption, now known as Planck's quantum hypothesis, provided a successful explanation for the observed energy distribution and laid the foundation for the development of quantum mechanics. The significance of this example lies in the fact that rather than rejecting the entire classical physics framework, Instead, physicists introduced a new auxiliary assumption that led to a paradigm shift in our understanding of the fundamental nature of energy and matter. This example demonstrates the flexibility of scientific theories to adapt and incorporate new insights even when faced with conflicting evidence. By examining the historical context and the specific scientific advancements related to black body radiation, we gain a deeper understanding and appreciation of how the Duhem Quine thesis challenges the simplistic view of falsificationism. Rather than outright falsifying classical physics, the observed discrepancies prompted the development of new auxiliary assumptions and theoretical frameworks, leading to a more comprehensive understanding of the physical phenomena involved. Next, consider the case of Newton's gravitational theory. Due to gravitational attraction in 1821, Alexis Bouvard predicted that the orbit of Uranus, known at the time as the planet that was farther away from the Sun in the solar system, would be such and such. But observations consistently showed that the actual trajectory deviated from this prediction. No serious scientist at the time thought that a well-confirmed theory such as Newton's should be immediately rejected because of a failed prediction. Rather, many revised some of the auxiliary assumptions including the one about Uranus actually being the planet furthest away from the Sun. Two scientists working independently 
Adams, and Leverrier posited that there must be another planet whose position and mass was affecting Uranus's trajectory. They calculated where this planet was supposed to be and how massive it would be. Eventually, the planet Neptune was discovered by direct observation. Another example that illustrates this point is the solar neutrino problem. Neutrinos are near massless microparticles which are only subject to weak forces. They only interact with protons and can go through almost any massive object. Our sun emits a vast number of neutrinos from its core, and the analysis of this flux of neutrinos is the main way of studying the inner workings of the sun. In the 60s, given what they knew at the time regarding the sun and neutrinos, scientists predicted a given number of neutrinos coming from the sun, but experiments showed only about a third of this number. This discrepancy was known as the solar neutrino problem. In this case, the tested hypothesis was the standard solar model, and the auxiliary hypotheses included knowledge concerning the nature of neutrinos, the instruments that measured the solar neutrino flux, and the assumptions concerning the whole experimental setup. Scientists didn't just reject the standard solar model in the face of this discrepancy. After all, the standard solar model was well confirmed by many other situations and experiments, but analyzed some of these other assumptions. They hypothesized that perhaps neutrinos were more complex than they initially thought, and that there may be more kinds of neutrinos, some of which were undetectable by the measuring devices used in the initial experiment and this hypothesis was confirmed in 1985. Now ask yourself, did Adams, Leverrier, and the scientists involved in the solar neutrino problem proceed in an unscientific manner by not dropping their theories immediately? Surely they didn't. So there must be something wrong with Popper's falsifiability criterion. It is true that if a theory consistently fails to be confirmed, then that would be a good indication that it should be abandoned. But that would take us away from Popper's criterion. After all, how many disconfirmations would one need in order to reject the theory? That would of course depend on each particular situation, but we see now that contrary to Popper's suggestion, falsifiability by itself is not enough to reject or accept a theory. Now, you may be wondering why this matters at all with regards to the debate on God's existence or whether or not Christianity is true. The Duhem Quine thesis and its implications for theory evaluation, particularly its emphasis on holism and the underdetermination of theory by evidence, can be applied to the debate about the truth of Christianity. While it's important to note that the matters of religious belief extend beyond the realm of scientific inquiry, the Duhem Quine thesis offers a framework that allows for a more nuanced understanding of complexity and flexibility of Christian theism in response to challenges and criticisms. For instance, one aspect of the Duhem Quine thesis is its recognition of the holistic nature of scientific theories. Similarly, in the context of Christianity, the belief system encompasses a comprehensive worldview that includes theological doctrines, moral teachings, and explanations of the nature of God, humanity, and the world. When confronted with the problem of evil, for example, which questions how the existence of a benevolent and all-powerful God can be reconciled with the presence of suffering and injustice of the world, the Duhem Quine framework allows Christians to approach the issue holistically. By considering the problem of evil within the broader theological framework of Christianity, believers can explore various interconnected aspects such as free will, the consequences of human choices, the role of suffering in saint-making, and the ultimate redemption and restoration of creation. This holistic perspective enables Christians to address the problem of evil not as a standalone challenge to the truth of Christianity, but as an integral part of a comprehensive theological narrative that encompasses the whole entire human experience. Furthermore, the Duhem Quine thesis encourages Christians to engage in critical reflection and revision of auxiliary assumptions within their theological framework. Perhaps the problem of evil doesn't highlight an issue with theism itself, but rather an axiological assumption. This can involve theological debates and discussions that seek to refine and develop responses to the problem of evil, drawing on diverse philosophical, ethical, and theological perspectives. The flexibility provided by the Duhem Quine framework allows Christians to explore and consider different explanations and solutions, 
acknowledging the complexity and the interconnectedness of their belief system. And this extends beyond the philosophical inquiries as well. Take a look at historical debates. The history of Christianity is replete with debates and disagreements about its truth claims, ranging from theological doctrines to historical events, such as the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. These debates have involved the critical evaluation of various pieces of evidence, interpretation of historical texts, and philosophical arguments. Applying the Duhem Quine thesis to historical debates about the truth of Christianity allows for an understanding of the interconnectedness of different historical and theological claims. Rather than evaluating isolated pieces of evidence or events in isolation, the Duhem Quine framework prompts scholars and theologians to consider the larger historical and theological context. For example, the debate surrounding the historical evidence for the resurrection of Jesus Christ requires considering a network of interconnected beliefs, such as the reliability of the gospel accounts, the theological significance of the resurrection, and the coherence of the overall Christian worldview. The Duhem Quine framework encourages scholars to engage in a holistic evaluation that takes into account multiple lines of evidence, historical context, and theological implications allowing for a more nuanced understanding of the debate. Beyond philosophical and historical debates, scientific discoveries and insights can also be viewed through the lens of the Duhem Quine thesis within the context of Christian theism. As scientific knowledge advances, new findings may raise questions or appear to challenge certain interpretations or beliefs. However, the Duhem Quine framework encourages Christians to approach these scientific challenges again with a holistic perspective. For instance, the theory of evolution is often discussed in relation to Christianity, particularly in the context of the creation account in the book of Genesis. The Duhem Quine thesis invites Christians to evaluate the relationship between the scientific theories and their theological understanding in a comprehensive manner. This involves considering the theological richness of creation accounts, the symbolism and metaphorical nature of biblical texts, and the compatibility of evolutionary theory with theological concepts such as divine providence. By adopting a holistic approach, Christians can engage in a nuanced evaluation that recognizes the limits and the strengths of scientific knowledge while exploring how scientific insights can enrich their understanding of the world and their faith. This allows for a fruitful dialogue between science and Christian theology, where both domains contribute to a deeper comprehension of the complexities of existence. In conclusion, the application of the Duhem Quine thesis to the debate about the truth of Christianity provides a comprehensive framework that acknowledges the complexity and the interconnectedness of belief systems. It allows for a more nuanced evaluation, critical reflection, and flexibility in addressing challenges, historical debates, and scientific advancements within the context of Christian theism. This holistic and reflective approach does not render religious beliefs unfalsifiable or post hoc rationalizations, but rather provides a robust framework for evaluating their plausibility and coherence in a thoughtful and intellectually rigorous manner. Moreover, the Duhem Quine thesis highlights the flexibility and explanatory power of Christian theism in response to historical challenges, philosophical challenges, and scientific challenges. By recognizing the interconnectedness of beliefs within the broader Christian worldview, proponents of Christian theism have the ability to revise auxiliary assumptions, reinterpret historical events, or incorporate new evidence while maintaining the core tenets of their faith. This flexibility allows for a dynamic engagement with historical debates, philosophical debates, and scientific debates, and the incorporation of emerging insights and scholarship. It is important to note that the application of the Duhem Quine thesis to the debate about the truth of Christianity does not claim to provide a conclusive proof or disproof of religious claims. Instead, it offers a probabilistic framework that acknowledges the complexity and the interconnectedness of belief systems allowing for a more nuanced evaluation, critical reflection, and flexibility in addressing challenges and historical debates within the context of Christian theism. The argument that Christianity or any religious belief is unfalsifiable based upon the Duhem Quine thesis, confirmational holism and Bayesianism, is a misunderstanding of the nature of theory evaluation and the flexibility of these frameworks. While it is true that religious beliefs by their nature may not lend themselves to direct empirical testing in the same way as scientific hypotheses, 
it does not render them unfalsifiable or dismiss them as post hoc rationalizations. The general idea that we're looking here is called conformational holism, as emphasized by the Duhem Quine thesis, which recognizes the interconnectedness and interdependence of beliefs and assumptions within theoretical frameworks. In the case of Christianity, the evaluation of its truth claims involves examining the coherence and consistency of its various doctrines, theological concepts, and historical narratives. This holistic evaluation is not a post hoc rationalization, but a rigorous assessment of the internal consistency and logical coherence of the belief system. By considering the broader theological context, Christians can critically evaluate how different elements fit together, ensuring that their beliefs are mutually reinforcing and logically sound. In this process, potential conflicts or inconsistencies can be identified and addressed, leading to a more robust and coherent understanding of their faith. Lastly, when we pair all this up with Bayesianism, which is a framework of probabilistic reasoning, we are provided a valuable tool for theory evaluation, including our religious beliefs. Bayesianism recognizes that beliefs are updated based on the available evidence and the assessment of the likelihood of various hypotheses. In the context of Christianity, Bayesian reasoning allows believers to weigh the evidence, consider arguments from philosophy, history, theology, science, and personal experiences, and make reasoned judgments about the plausibility and coherence of their faith. Contrary to the notion of post hoc rationalizations, Bayesianism encourages a proactive and critical evaluation of evidence, ensuring that beliefs are not held dogmatically, but are open to revision in light of new information. It enables believers to assess the cumulative impact of various pieces of evidence and arguments and make rational decisions about the credibility and coherence of their beliefs. This highlights the flexibility inherent in the Duhem Quine thesis and these frameworks allow for open inquiry and exploration of alternative explanations and interpretations, not just in the scientific realm, but in a historical realm and religious realms. Rather than being a weakness, this flexibility is a strength that aligns with the practices of science itself. In scientific inquiry, hypotheses are often refined, modified, or even replaced in response to new evidence and theoretical advancements. Similarly, within the realm of religious belief, Christians have the freedom to engage in critical reflection, refine their understanding of theological concepts, and explore different approaches to address philosophical and historical objections. This flexibility does not undermine the credibility of Christian theism, but fosters a dynamic engagement with intellectual challenges and encourages continuous growth and refinement of theological perspectives. It is important to note that the evaluation of religious beliefs is multifaceted and again, extends beyond the boundaries of empirical testing. This framework of the Duhem Quine thesis, confirmational holism and Bayesianism provides a comprehensive approach that acknowledges the complexity of belief systems, encourages critical evaluation, coherence and reasoned judgment, and allows for the flexibility necessary to respond to challenges and engage in open inquiry. This holistic and reflective approach does not render religious beliefs unfalsifiable or post hoc rationalizations, but provides a robust framework for evaluating their plausibility and coherence in a thoughtful and intellectually rigorous and honest manner. So we just covered a lot of things here and you may have trouble tying it all together. Here is the basic idea. To recap, when atheists argue that Christianity is unfalsifiable, or that responses to objections are merely post hoc rationalizations, they overlook the nuances of theory evaluation and the frameworks we employ in scientific and philosophical and historical discourse. The Duhem Quine thesis, Confirmational Holism and Bayesianism offer valuable insights into how we assess the credibility of beliefs, including religious ones. First, holistic evaluation and coherence are key. Christians engage in a rigorous assessment in the internal consistency and logical coherence of their faith. It's not about post hoc rationalization, but about critically examining the interconnectedness of beliefs within a broader theological framework. Second, Bayesianism, a reasoned evaluation, play a crucial role. Christians weigh the available evidence, consider arguments from philosophy, history, theology, science, and personal experiences, 
and make reasoned judgments about the plausibility and coherence of their faith. This is a proactive and intellectually rigorous process, not just a mere post hoc rationalization in an attempt to dishonestly avoid disconfirmation of their beliefs. Finally, explanatory flexibility and open inquiry are vital. Just as scientific hypotheses like the ones we covered earlier are refined and modified based on new evidence, Christians have the freedom to engage in critical reflection, refine their understanding, and explore alternative explanations. This flexibility fosters growth and refinement rather than being an admonition of unfalsifiability. In conclusion, the charges of unfalsifiability and post hoc rationalization leveled against Christians by atheists are misplaced. By employing the Duhem Quine thesis, confirmational holism and Bayesianism, Christians engage in a thoughtful and intellectually robust evaluation of their beliefs. They assess coherence, employ reasoned judgment, and embrace exploratory and explanatory flexibility. This comprehensive approach allows for a more nuanced understanding of the faith and counters the misconceptions surrounding its evaluation. In light of the Duhem Quine thesis, falsificationism appears to be outdated and inadequate as a comprehensive theory evaluation methodology. The holistic nature of scientific theories, the underdetermination of theory by evidence, the subjectivity of theory evaluation, and the refinement and evolution of theories all challenge the notion that falsificationism alone can provide conclusive assessments of scientific theories. Embracing a more nuanced and holistic approach to theory evaluation allows for a deeper understanding of the complex dynamics within scientific inquiry and promotes the progress of scientific knowledge as well as religious knowledge. The inclusion of the counterexamples to falsificationism further strengthens the argument that falsification alone is insufficient for comprehensive theory evaluation and that we ought to follow the lighter reason that the Duhem Quine thesis, confirmational holism, and Bayesianism provide. So, no, when Christians are giving answers to objections raised against their beliefs, they are not merely providing an unfalsifiable theory or providing post hoc rationalizations in order to dishonestly avoid disconfirmation. Rather, they are embracing a more nuanced and holistic approach to theory evaluation that better matches how scientific practice is done. Hey, if you're watching this, that means you watched the video all the way through, and I am tremendously thankful for that. If you find value in the work that I'm doing, please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification. And if you want to help me continue to make better videos and more videos in the future, please consider becoming a patron and joining me in this ministry mission. Until next time. Thank <laughs> you.